this is not bode well, Jeff. We came out and sat down, and the timer is already started. Like, they're Shit. like, you guys. We're five minutes late. Th they're cutting our time already. We haven't even started. <laughs> it's because we only have one metal detector backstage, so. <laughs> That's why. Go, go. Thanks. Good morning, everyone. I can't believe people get up early to come to this. The, the crew backstage was telling me that people were here at 7.30 this morning. Oh, that's stupid. <laughs> yeah, y'all are the teacher's pets, and y'all cheering for yourself. Nerds. F future tip for subsequent conventions, you're supposed to be hungover today. That's the way that's supposed yeah. to work. Yeah. <laughs> I, I shared an elevator with Mega64 this morning. Ooh. Not feeling very mega this morning. <laughs> They're doing it right. Well, we're, we are bright-eyed and ready for this. Right. I got full night's sleep. Me too. Yeah. It was good. Yeah, high five. Responsible adults. There you go. So, Shut up. Gus, I do have a question, though. I mean, you still have some ability to affect what happens in RTX, right? Or have you lost all your influence? All gone. I don't, this is the first year without an RTX staff badge. What? Did he have ability to affect it when he ran RTX? <laughs> I, I, I delegated. That's what you do. You're CEO. You know what that's like. That's right. <laughs> Just a yeah. long series of blaming someone that's, else for yeah. everything. Hey, man, it all rolls downhill. Operated. It's a long hill. But why do they have the old men of Rooster Teeth panel at like 9.30 in the morning on Saturday? No. Because so we, we got to get done in time for dinner at yeah, noon. Yeah, Golden Corral. <laughs> <laughs> like, Luby starts to queue up in about 45 minutes. <laughs> I can't hear anything. <laughs> <laughs> For those of you not from Texas, Luby's is a place where very old people eat and crazy people shoot up old people. Oh, wow, yeah. Need more metal detectors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> wow. The metal detectors are a new thing. Like, we haven't had those previously, right? Uh, we had some at the autograph signing last year, uh, but I think it's more widespread. So we protected year. us, basically, yeah. as well. We were protected. It's all because uh, a bunch of people killed the Green Power Ranger, right? What? No, is that an urban legend? No, the, uh, no, it's like someone tried to kill the Green Power Ranger at Phoenix Comic Con. Yeah. I think the way Jeff said that was a bunch of people killed the Green Power Ranger. I <laughs> like it happened every the, day for a year. I skimmed the headline. <laughs> that guy was committed. I got most of it. He had it as a calendar alert on his phone. He did. <laughs> like, it, was, it was really weird. It was just something that pops up and says, "Run!" <laughs> I also read he tried to kill him with a knife a couple of years ago and didn't didn't work out, so he upgraded to a shotgun and a couple other guns. Okay, shit got serious. All I'm hearing is that in every previous year of RTX, we were less cool than the Green Power yeah. Ranger. <laughs> I told Jeff yesterday he's at Green Power Ranger uh, level now. No, I'm not. <laughs> <laughs> well, I, I do think, though, the, the metal detectors, it's like you guys should be proud because you're like the bad boys of the con circuit. <laughs> you are a dangerous crew. Look out. Look at this guy. <laughs> throwing <laughs> the horns. <laughs> you guys are the Tupac of the uh, <laughs> Normally, like, during the panels, we ask for the people who, like, br brought alcohol to bring it to us. But this year, we're just asking for all your weapons. <laughs> That's Ahu, yeah. <laughs> it's not a very popular show. Jeff, did I hear correctly? Are you not drinking anymore? No, I quit, dude. You just like, I'm just, done. You and I are so close. We talk all the time. I haven't had a drink in 128 days. 128 but, days. Yeah. I guess. You know, you know you're serious when you have the exact number. Yeah. You're like, eh, I haven't had a drink in four months. That's all I got no, to look 128 to. days. Like, do you wake up every morning and do you have like a little, like a flip counter? You like flip over the new tile, the new number every day? <laughs> yeah, I do. <laughs> Gus, you're making fun, but when he said the number 128, I know secretly inside you were happy that it was a binary It's a number. binary. <laughs> <laughs> it's expressible as a binary. Yep. I, I was. Yesterday, he, he said it was 127. I was like, oh, one more day. Yeah. Be there. That's, how, that's what I say to myself every day. Just fucking survive one more sober, boring, lame day. These are long. They, there are so many out. Shut up. There are so many hours in a day. I never knew that. Yeah. Oh, my God. It's boring. They were always there, Jeff. But alcohol, <sighs> alcohol is like a time machine. You, like, strap yourself in and whoop. Suddenly, you're 40 pounds heavier and 40. <laughs> you're hungover at 9.30 in the morning yeah. in a panel in front of a couple thousand people. Yeah, now you have so much time for activities. You could kill like three or four Power Rangers in a day. <laughs> That's true. I'm going to work my way through all the primary colors. <laughs> Look out, fuchsia.
<laughs> All right, so uh, normally what we do is we just make up bullshit for a couple minutes, and then we go to revert, we revert to Q&A. &A. <laughs> so uh, I think the, the bullshit portion is probably complete. Uh, so do you want to get people to line up? You want to do a Q&A? We got nothing else in the here's, And listen, here's the way the Founders panel works for the Q&A, though. We get one question, then we go for about probably like 20 or 30 minutes and then get to the second question. So why don't we line up? If you guys have any questions, we can start taking them over here. You, you guys got to run. You know what? Miles did something yesterday during the RVE panel, which I, I think we should adopt. It was right before the people started asking questions. He gave a list of questions, which was no spoilers. And then he said one thing, which is no downers. No, because he didn't want any downers. Yeah, no downers. I like that. No downers. Yeah. No downers. All right, let's just fucking sat down. <laughs> it's let's like, uh, start over here. I was about to be super depressing. <laughs> <laughs> Sorry, dude. <All> right. <laughs> Never mind. You guys ruined my life. Yeah. <laughs> That's why we have the metal detectors, because of that dude right there. I'll just go fucking sit back down. He's still getting closer. Keep, keep my crippling depression <laughs> to myself. <laughs> That's Ray, I think. <laughs> it gets better. Uh, maybe. All right. Uh, how about uh, on, on the left to you, sir, with the hat and the shirt that you're wearing? Okay. Okay. Um, what was the best or worst thing that you had to do, but that you don't want to do anymore? Have a real job. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but no, that's the. I mean, that's the the big benefit I think of Rishi that is never lost on me is, you know, we all had day jobs for a long time. We talk to people all the time, RTX. I talk to people at VidCon about how to get started and everything. I don't know if you guys want to reveal how fucking old you are, but when Red versus Blue finally took off, is like it seems like that was our first hit. But I was 29 years old when that happened, and for those of you in the audience, I'm sure most of you are younger than that now. It's like you think about the number of years between you and 29 of getting something started. Matt and I, Joel, and me and Gus, we all worked on stuff through our 20s before we finally had something that really took off. I also exist. <laughs> what was that? Nothing. It's fine. Did I not say your name? No. <laughs> or you were okay, in, I don't think anybody noticed. You were, in the, you were in the army. That's like a whole other thing. I don't even... I, I was at work with you and him every fucking day. We worked together for five and a half years. We'll have to I'm go back, go back to the that. tape. I said stuff I worked on with Matt and Joel and stuff I worked on with Gus and Jeff. He said Gus. No. 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 Nope. <laughs> All right. Shut the fuck up. Your, your nickname now is The Tape. Yeah. Any, uh, Anybody else? It What's is. The worst there, thing you had like, to do? Matt, Joel, you guys away? My, my yeah. answer is 9.30 in the morning. <laughs> I'm just glad we don't have to do that drunk red versus blue episode ever again. <laughs> that's why, Listen. That's why Jeff's not drinking. He's still hung over from that. <laughs> yeah. yeah. That video, that recording was three and a half hours long. We showed you 11 minutes. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. It's true. I'm going to finish that story right now, though. <laughs> How much time do we have? No, not enough time. Sorry. I, I don't know if the edited version really communicated it, but Matt... He told a story where he was living in L.A. He called the place where we worked. Jeff answered the phone, and it was in the middle of season one. I was the sexy secretary. <laughs> and Matt said, hey, it's Matt. And Jeff goes, yeah. And he goes, things are going really well. And Jeff goes, yeah. And then gives the phone to me. That's the whole story. It took Matt 45 minutes and, and to I, tell the story <laughs> that I just told you in 20 seconds. I, I, I would have told it with a little more fanfare. <laughs> <laughs> That's the gist of it. So, Matt, I understand that Jersey Mike's has been ruined for you, like your kids when you go to Jersey Mike's. Uh, it's the, I, that's why I can't go on the podcast or, or stuff now, because anytime I, anyone tells a story about me or does anything, my kids hound me about it for, like, the next two months. <laughs> like, if if... Something in our house goes wrong. My my twelve year old just says, "Dad, we should have had more fanfare around that." <laughs> <laughs> I mean, it's it's really brutal. Um, that's awesome. So that's not good. Want to go over here? Hi. Um, uh, my question is. Uh, so okay, thank you. <laughs> yes. <laughs> Little microphone adjustment there. Little technical issue. So, Jeff, you had Gavin living in your house for, what, like seven years? Off and on, yeah. 
So I guess my question is, the rest of you, if you had to take in one uh, person from Rooster Teeth and have them live with you for, I don't know, the rest of your life, 10 years, as long as you Jesus. Want. I guess maybe the rest of their life until you kill them. We're, but we're going to wait 10 years to do it? Is that what? <laughs> I, I would, I, I can answer that. I would take in Jeff because <laughs> when we first started Rooster Teeth, I lived with Jeff for two years. Sure. Uh, when we were first starting out and we weren't sure if things were going to take off, I had to live rent free. <laughs> uh, and I, so I bought the cheapest car I could and I lived in Jeff's spare bedroom uh, at his old house for, uh, for about two years. Yep. So uh, I owe him still. So that's, a, that's an easy one. I can pay him back. I could tell you, of, and we've had a lot of like great uh, people at Rooster Teeth throughout the years, and, and just a tremendous amount of people at Rooster Teeth now. So I think I can unequivocally tell you, for me, it would be Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> no one else giving it a go? Well, uh, uh, what? This is being broadcast. So I'm going to say Ashley. So. <laughs> Talk to me but only later. because it's being broadcast. Yeah, that's right. Talk to me later. I'll give you the real answer. I saw, I, I saw that old house that uh, Jeff and I lived in together is, is for sale. Yeah. So if you're, mo if you're moving to Austin, you might live in the house we lived in. Yeah. You could be in the house that stored the first 10,000 RVB DVDs. Yeah. I remember when... Uh, Most of them are probably still there. Yeah, they're in the <laughs> attic. They're tucked away. I remember when Jeff first started dating Griffin, and I came over, and she had just moved in. And uh, I was like, walked into that house and I go, where's all your carpet? It was just bare cement floor and those tack strips everywhere. Yeah. Because she had pulled out all the carpet uh, the first day she moved in. <laughs> and then you guys painted the bedroom hallway and all the doors black. Yeah. Uh. Think about that. Ceiling, walls, doors are black. And like the main bathroom to the house also black. So when they would get up in the middle of the night, because we'd work late sometimes, we'd go there like stuffing DVDs and stuff, you hear somebody like going to the bathroom in the middle of the night and you just hear shuffle, 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 boom, oh! <laughs> you couldn't see anything in that hallway. And that's why I did it. <laughs> <clears throat> did, you, did you paint it before you left? No. You sold it with a black hallway? Yeah. Good lord. <laughs> How, how's the, that brothel doing, problem. by the way? Seller's market, dude, <laughs> in Austin. That's all that says. It would fucking hurt your brain to find out how much that house sold for. Hey, Gus told me. It's fucking stupid. <laughs> if you bought that house, you're stupid. <laughs> All right, what side are we at? Over there? Yeah. yeah. Uh, what's uh, up, guys? So I was wondering, Bernie, if you could talk about starting the vlog. And uh, I just feel, especially with Red versus Blue, Rooster Teeth is ahead of the curve in seeing what... We're ahead of the curve on vlogs? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> they're really, we're, we're thinking they're really going to take on, they're going to catch on. <laughs> Sorry, go ahead. No, you used to be head of the curve. Now you're. <laughs> <laughs> no, so I was gonna ask, like Bernie, uh, you talked about how like Jesse Welly and uh, yeah inspired you to start the vlog, um, and also I was wondering, Gus, you had an amazing vlog at RTX Sydney. Like, why don't you vlog more? You're obviously better. I'm not a narcissist. <laughs> <laughs> really? You say your name twice on the podcast every fucking week. For eight years. Listen, I earned the right to have top billing. And I don't know which one is top billing, so I'm taking it regardless of which one it is. Right. <laughs> Quick answer to your question. I always thought vlogging was just people sitting in a bedroom talking to a webcam. I had no idea that it had shifted into what it is now. And I did an event last year with Jesse Wellens. Uh, and it was the same event we just did uh, at E3 again this year, so it's like a year of when we did it. It's the event where uh, I had to play Battlefield 1, and I was next to Jesse Wellens, but then on the other side of me was Snoop Dogg, and across from me was Wiz Khalifa. So how high did you get? I got, I'm still high to this day. <laughs> it was like, they smoked the entire time, and the organizer for the event uh, came over and asked me, because Bernie, are you getting like, a contact high. And I go, there's so much smoke in the air, I can't see you. It's like we're in a fog bank. It's not a secondary high, it's not a contact high, I'm just high. And, uh, but, but I was watching everything he was doing with his cameras and everything, and he was curious, he's like, why aren't you filming anything? I go, well, I'm gonna make a gameplay video, that's it. 
and he was like a gameplay video, and he we talked about it for a little bit. I went home and watched some of his stuff, and I was like, oh, this is this is filmmaking. The stuff they're doing, it's really cool, like lifestyle filmmaking, and it's really cool. And then you know, uh, found like people like Casey Neistat after that, uh, and then you know, I fell in love with Steven Suptic, you know, who we just started working with. So although his stuff isn't vlogging, it's alternative lifestyle. Let me uh, let me ask you a question. How was your glaucoma that day? Oh, it was great. <laughs> But uh, yeah, so that's the that's why I got into it. And historically at Rooster Teeth, I like to like start something, do it for like three or four months, and then hand it off to somebody else, and hopefully it turns into something big. And I think that's the point that I'm at with vlogging right now. So who are you turning your vlog over to? Barbara. There you go. Barbara or whomever. Somebody who's not 44. How about that? It's still gonna be called Bernie's blog though. It's weird. <laughs> All right, thanks for taking my question, guys. I have a quick uh, just thing. I have a little chattering teeth thing. Could you guys sign it for me? Not right now. All right. If we sign it for you, we got to sign it for 3,999 other motherfuckers. <laughs> now, not if we just have, like, a only chattering teeth rule. What's the yeah. Okay, we'll only sign chattering teeth. Come on But up. we don't have a pen. Right, thanks. Has it, has it been through the metal detector? <laughs> Fuck. You. Oh. <laughs> Hi. Um, so... It's been years since the beginning of Red versus Blue. That's what would you tell yourself? That's her whole question. <laughs> yeah, it's been All right, next question. <laughs> years. What would you tell yourselves back then? Don't, name the, com now? don't name the company Rooster Teeth. <laughs> I disagree. I think that Rooster Teeth is a good name over time. I'm, I'm, I'm sick of people telling me roosters don't have teeth. And I'm sick of people asking me what the origin of the name is. Yeah. Uh, that is true. And I'm also sick of spelling it when I have to give someone my email address. Oh, it's the worst. <laughs> and then, that, then the, the person's like, why? Right. <laughs> you know, for me, I think if I, if, you know, if I could actually go back in time, and I mean, because I've learned a lot through the years, but I think if I could actually go back in time and tell myself one thing, it would be uh, Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> there you go, buddy. I, I don't know. Um... I, you know, uh, from a business perspective, I think maybe we, uh, you know, spend a lot of time, like, making very deliberate choices and, you know, maybe not sometimes just, like, jumping on things. Like, we were late to YouTube, uh, late to some other stuff, and I think over a long period of time, the story of Rooster Teeth has become one of longevity, but I think there were points in time where maybe we could have grown a little faster, maybe gotten to the point where we're making feature films a little quicker, that kind of thing. But I'm not unhappy with any of the choices we made. I just think maybe we might have been able to do a couple of things faster here. Yeah, hindsight's 2020. I think every they, it all made sense in the in the moment, right? Oh, yeah. 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 <laughs> yeah. Nah. <laughs> so, um, Bernie, first of all, you were amazing on The Amazing Race. Thank um, you. <laughs> but... I wanted to ask you something. Um, but, in The Tattooist, Jeff, you say that you started as four guys in a spare bedroom, and there are now lots of people in a really large spare bedroom. Um, how has it affected how you work, and uh, has it um, pressured you to succeed more? <laughs> What was the question? Like, <laughs> how has it affected how we? How work? did you like me on the Amazing Race? I don't know. Was the question? <laughs> no, having 260 employees, how having such a big company has affected how you work now? Uh, before. <laughs> uh, I just created a new spare bedroom and I hide in that. Yeah. I don't know. Just the the <laughs> the house is a hell of a lot bigger, but my bedroom's the same size. So, when you want to yell at someone for something, you're not sure who to yell at. Yeah, but we there's a, a form we, for it. We have a. Uh, there's a lot of forms now. <laughs> a lot of forms. You're welcome. <laughs> My favorite form is Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> we had a this is it's not the case anymore because we have we haven't worked out but there was a period when we had explosive growth when we were getting like i don't know it seemed like 10 new people every week were joining the company we'd have a a monday morning meeting and there were like you couldn't keep up with how many new people were joining uh or getting hired we had a rule where if you saw somebody in the building and you didn't recognize them 
you you had to go to them and ask them if they work here, and they're like, yeah, I work. I'm I'm in animation. You had to walk them to their supervisor to make sure they actually worked here because we've had some incidents, and. Uh, uh, I knew we were getting big when people started asking me if I worked here and would try to walk me to Matt or Vaughn to make sure that I was an employee. Yeah. And I'd have to convince people. They'd try to get him a blanket. Yeah. <laughs> a cup of coffee. <laughs> you. Hi. Okay, so I know you guys are like super busy, but would you ever like consider doing a let's play of just the founding fathers? I uh, I am old. I cannot figure out what in the fuck is going on with the menu system on the Xbox anymore. <laughs> yeah. No, it's well, good. it's good. Point. We can help yeah. you through that, Joel. Uh, I would love to do it. Joel, a, you're a, absolutely right. I, like uh, f Halo. Yeah, it'd be great to do like, Halo system, Let's Play. Like System Link, old yeah. ex original Xbox. I, I say this. <laughs> I say oh, this oh. every year. I've said this to Matt and Bernie multiple times. I think it would be fun if we all got together and we made an episode of Red vs. Blue in Halo 1 and see if we could still remember how to fucking do it. And every time I say that, they go, shut up. <laughs> No, I mean, I think it's a good idea. We could, we could do a game in, like, Halo, uh, and then we could get really drunk, and then we could hear the end of Matt's story. Yeah, there you go. Because I want to know. I want to know how it ended. It was a magical evening. <laughs> right, where are we at? Wait, Jeff, what you, so this is something that, like, comes up a lot. Okay. And, and, and Gavin and Michael in particular, uh, I watched them passive-aggressively argue with each other about it. What do you consider to be the first Let's Play that was ever made at Rooster Teeth, since you are the expert? I, I know the answer to this. Go ahead. Well, everyone has a different answer. It's not Scarlett Johansson. <laughs> <laughs> uh, it's, it's one of two videos. I don't know which one came out first. It's either us playing uh, Left 4 Dead together. The survival strategy Survival guide. strategy that, guide, yeah. That was a founding father's yeah. Let's Play, which made me think about it. It's that. either us doing that or it's us playing Firefight and ODST. Okay. I think. I Why? think the Left 4 Dead one may have been, may first. Have been first. Yeah. Michael, um, you can call him on this. Michael would say Saints Row, and Gavin would that's say... That's the first video we ever called a Let's Play. Let's Play, right. Yeah. And Gavin would say... Of course, they're all videos that they made. Yeah. Uh, Gavin would say the Watchmen Achievement Yeah, okay. It, 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 I guess Gavin might be technically correct in that, in that that came before the other two, and it was Gavin and I doing a full playthrough and talking at the same time, but uh, it wasn't very good. <laughs> so, I, I tend to, when I, my, what I think of as a let's play, I would say is probably that ODST or the, probably the Left 4 Dead, I guess. Yeah, I think Left 4 Dead. Yeah. So, we just didn't, uh, we didn't have a name for it back then. What, what was the first Achievement Hunter video? First Achievement Hunter video was the Millionaire yep. something guide. No, that's wrong. Burnout Paradise. That's wrong. It was, was it the driving one? Yeah. yeah. The Jack made it. It was the very first, it was called the first Achievement Hunter guide. I got the idea for Achievement Hunter from recording myself getting uh, an achievement in uh, Dead Rising, the one where you have to run over 10 billion people, 72,000 people or whatever it was, mm -hmm. and I put it in my journal, but it didn't have voiceover or anything. It was just me getting the achievement and popping it, and that's where I had the idea for Achievement Hunter. You guys, you guys had that contest back in the day, right? When you were, oh, like, uh, uh, Jeff and Bernie had a contest to see who uh, was... Why you uh, got to bring that up? <laughs> <laughs> I was going to say something different. But. Still waiting on that bet. Pay off. Yeah, still waiting on it. I still offered to do the original. <laughs> what's the, what's the, okay, let's settle this I don't right even now. remember. <laughs> I don't even remember. Could y'all do us a favor? I was going to y'all clear something. the room? Jeff and I need to talk about something. <laughs> okay. So we did a Call of Duty thing uh, for uh, Mile High Club. Mile, well, it wasn't Mile High Club. We were, it turned to be the Mile High Club achievement. But we were going to get all the achievements in Modern Warfare, Call of Duty 4. Four, right, four. Um, and so we did that, and we did it all weekend long. Jeff did all this shady stuff, honestly, where he like put himself offline so I couldn't see what achievements he had, etc. Shady. The bet was whoever got him first, the other person would have to get an achievement that the other person assigned to them. And I was going to make him get the seven day survivor achievement on Dead Rising. That was the bet. Somehow that turned into instead of getting that achievement. Jeff was going to take himself out to a sushi dinner. Seriously. <laughs> he ate sushi and he said, no, that's, that's me paying you for that. I don't like sushi. 
He called it a real life achievement that he ate sushi. So I don't. I honestly don't remember. Nine years ago. Yeah, it was a long time ago. No, I'm not bitter about it or anything like that. So this is a little tall. <laughs> um, so when you guys first started to realize that you were about to get kind of famous. Ish, you know, internet famous, not real famous. Thank, thank you. you. <laughs> thank you for prefacing that. Did you, um, did you think that anything was going to change in your life and, like, you kind of prepared yourself for that and then it didn't? Joel? Well, I, I remember I, I, I called Bernie and Jeff answered. <laughs> <laughs> How much time do we have? <laughs> Go. Never, never mind. <laughs> what, what was the question? <laughs> Jeff, or Joel, was there anything that, uh, that you hoped would happen as you became more internet famous? Uh, What's happened? Scroll the trance. <laughs> We're all waiting for it. Say We're all waiting it. for it. Say it again. I, was hoping, I was hoping to get rid of my liver. <laughs> <laughs> I'm almost there. <laughs> all right, thank you guys. Internet famous is weird, though. Internet famous is like, it's, this is, the experience of RTX is like a three-day period where it's, we get a kind of a taste of what it would be like to be actually famous, like really famous, and uh, I couldn't imagine it, honestly. It's just like, it, if it, it's so tremendous to be able to do it, like for three days, and then, you know, on Tuesday, just walk a block away from the convention center and nobody gives a fuck who we are, you know? It's, it's nice to be able to kind of turn it on and off. You can, it gives you perspective, you can understand why a guy like, say, Tom Cruise is a fucking lunatic. Yes. In his life. Yeah. Yeah, seriously. Or it's even like, like going even to Starbucks an would take three hours. Like a Michael Vick. You're like, he probably doesn't know it's wrong to have dogs fight each other. Yep. Nobody ever told him no. Nobody told him no. Yeah. Inter yeah. Interesting leap. I don't know. It's, a, it's a, the first thing that comes to mind. I don't know why. <laughs> That's just an X panel dog fighting. <laughs> so what was the original uh, process for creating the cast of RVB. Was it just one person creating the character, or did you all unanimously agree on him? Uh, well, I mean, I wrote the characters, and a lot of times, Gus was talking about this yesterday in the RVB panel, uh, a lot of them tend to have traits for the people that ended up in those roles. It just kind of makes sense. No offense, Jeff. Um, or Joel. Or Matt, or Gus, no event. Uh, <laughs> but then uh, everybody, um, you know, everybody brought something and completely changed the character. If you go back and look at the characters in season, or excuse me, in episode one or two, that was, I think, the last point at which the characters were solely written by the writer. After that, it, like, they took off and kind of took their own direction. And after that point, now, 15 years later, it's a complete collaborative effort. So. Joel and, I, Joel and I get in arguments, though, about who made Caboose dumber. Before, it was, we were blaming each other for it, and now we both take credit for it. So. I always assumed that with Griff and Simmons, you, you slowly, over season one and two, realized that Gus and I cannot emote or act in any way, and you just kind of gave up trying to yeah. write that into it. I think you can emote. <laughs> I think, ooh, is an emote. <laughs> I think Anna deserves some credit actually for making Caboose as dumb as he is. Yeah? Yeah, because I remember when Joel would come over. Uh, Joel would come over to record lines. This is when we were all still in, well, half of us were in LA, and Joel would come over to our apartment to record his lines. And we would do it in my, in my closet with like coats over our heads for the sound dampening. And Joel would do some lines, and I think Anna would say, You know, Joel, I think you should do it stupider. I've heard you be a lot more stupid. <laughs> <laughs> they they had these cats. Matt and Anna had these oh, cats. Oh no! And that's when I, I, Caboose is nothing more than like how you interact with animals. Yep. Yeah. And Caboose thinks that everyone is an animal. I Joel, I still think your one of your early interpretations mm -hmm. of Caboose. Oh yeah. Was, is my absolute favorite. So brilliant is somebody at a panel asked like you know. You want to talk to Joel about Caboose and why is Caboose the way he is? And Caboose said, or Joel said, <laughs> sorry. And Joel said, uh, Joel said that uh, he approaches Caboose as though Caboose is the only one who knows that he's in a video game. <laughs> I don't know, it seemed brilliant to me. Absolutely brilliant. Uh, uh, thank you. Yep. 
So, with RTX becoming so big and Rooster as a company now with multiple companies involved, what plans do you guys have for the, for the future now that you have like R RTX Sydney and RTX London? Build, build your own RTX. <laughs> At your house, dude. Yeah, Lego RTX. <laughs> it, it's a uh, crowd distributed. You got like a metal detector. That's right. <laughs> and then not go through it. And we've always tried to be very careful about the growth of the event. You know, uh, it would have been a lot easier to grow it a lot more aggressively in the early years, but I really didn't know what I was doing. So we, uh, we always capped the number of people we wanted at any given time so we could understand what we were doing. And I think we still kind of take, when we, we try to take a slow approach where we understand everything that we're, we're jumping into. So don't expect to see a million RTXs anytime soon, but we'll, we'll have smart growth, hopefully. All right, thank you. There's nothing as rewarding as the slow growth applause. Yeah. I mean, it's rare at these panels that an actual question gets answered. Right? And so that was like the first time that the audience has ever applauded, actually. Yeah, yeah. That, that, being, that being said, I, I don't run RTX anymore, so. <laughs> We're having RTX Scarlett Johansson next year. Yeah, see? I'm giving her my liver. <laughs> Shut up. <laughs> hey, so that was actually very similar to my question. Okay, instead great, of, thank you. Instead of that, I'll <laughs> ask, uh, hey, Jeff, I've got one of those 10,000 uh, first run RVB season one DVDs, and I'm only missing your signature. Fine. Can I get a signature? Someday. Oh. Okay. Yeah, come on up. That's so, got to be a yes. Awesome. Come on. So we see. A lot of people claim to have one of the first 10,000. In fact, there was a post on I'll tell you if you do, actually. subreddit the other day by someone claiming they had one. And I looked at it, and in two seconds, I was like, obviously that's not. Yeah. yeah. It's, it gets kind of a bummer. There was, there was a guy in, uh, in our signing yesterday that came up with what uh, looked look, look like an original uh, RVB DVD that had come from GameStop. And he still had his receipt from when he bought it from GameStop. And I was like, man, that's so cool. And I can't believe you kept the receipt. And Bernie says... Well, yeah, because he wanted to return it. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. Just in case. Well, I mean, it's funny because not a lot of people know this, but if you actually go back and look at the original, like the first season, the original DVDs, yeah, yeah. and not a lot of people know this, uh, if, you, if you look in the, in the right-hand corner of those DVDs, the liver is missing. <laughs> hey, Joel. <laughs> you might want to sign this too, buddy. We missed the... I'm in Joel signing tomorrow. Oh, he's oh. in Joel signing tomorrow. Oh. He, he knows exactly uh, what he's doing. He's got to figure it out. Got a plan. Got a plan. Yeah. There you go. No problem. Was it a? Was it legit? Was it a? Yeah, it's good. Yeah, it's solid. Thanks for. Uh, Very thanks for uh, helping make this by buying yeah. that. Yeah. It's usually partially his usually. fault. Get him. I mean, honestly, those those. First, whoever bought those first 10,000 DVDs is just like, that's what made all of this possible yeah. over a long period of time. Because that first year, it's, you know, uh, getting started, we had huge bills that were rolling in from having to serve this stuff because YouTube didn't exist and we couldn't host it there. So we had to pay to host us and all the bandwidth that it ate up every time somebody downloaded a video. And so it's, you know, the people who were the initial sponsors and then got those DVDs, I mean, they, they, they kept the lights on. And, and kept Even when yeah. it came time to produce those DVDs, I remember we had a long discussion about how many to make. Like, we thought 10,000 might be too many. Yeah. That yeah. Yeah, we were going to end up wasting a bunch of money. <laughs> Burying them in the desert. Right, and just have a bunch of DVDs that we're not going to be able to it's, sell. Yeah, it's so, it's so funny. We, this actually came up in the Achievement Hunter panel yesterday for some reason, but uh, it's, it was such a different world when we started Red vs. Blue. It's hard to wrap your brain around. Facebook didn't exist. Uh, YouTube didn't exist, yep. so we had a we had to pay to give you the video every month. We had we had a servers in uh, correct me if I'm wrong here with Seattle, Sacramento, and for a while Houston. I, believe. I think it was San Antonio. Not San Houston, Antonio, yeah. And we had like multi thousand dollar a month bills that we had to pay just to keep the videos online, and uh, it was like it was yeah it was like it was scary. Yeah. To think like if we don't sell enough DVDs, we're not we're not going to be able to make episode eighteen. <laughs> right. Totally different world. Yeah. You kids, back in our day, back in, <laughs> we had to pay to give you we a video. We had to make videos uphill in the snow. <laughs> <laughs> but, you know, the Xbox menus worked. Yeah. <laughs> so there was that.
I don't know, the original Xbox had that glowing green ball you had to like kind of yeah, navigate around. Spin the ball. Your storage was in game. blocks. What the fuck is a block? I still don't know how many how much storage I had. They hide it from you. It 34 blocks, dude. We had to pay in blocks. <laughs> we had to upload videos with a fax machine. <laughs> <laughs> For a minute of time. All right, where were we? I don't even remember what side we were on. Over there? Thank you. Actually, probably one of the one of the biggest cost-saving things that ever happened in the history of Rooster Teeth. <laughs> was when Adobe introduced the video uh, flash codec. And yeah. our file sizes went from like 80 to 90 megs for a postage size stamp, or post stamp sized uh, QuickTime video to uh, like a half SD resolution uh, flash file that was like 12 megs. That was huge. Suddenly our cost of bandwidth went down by like, you know, four fifths. It was crazy. That's, that's 4.2. Stuff. <laughs> yeah, and y'all want a Joel Financial podcast? <laughs> yeah. It's nine in the morning. It's nine in the morning. It's ten. It's Go. Well, very quickly, uh, the mic check guy. Fantastic props to that guy. He was our entertainment for an hour and a half. Uh, so, Mike, great. Mike Check Guy, what was it like in the first season? <laughs> <laughs> but um, to all of you, uh, having been at a company like Rooster Teeth for so long and doing the work that you do, what's something you've learned that you didn't have perspective on previously? Hmm. God, did we learn anything? I, I like we have like learned nothing. Yeah, <laughs> we ha each have 15 years of experience up here, and we can't come up with one. No, thing. I, I, I got one. I got you one. Got. I got one. I'm not sure. Metal detectors suck. <laughs> I think it, it's maybe kind of a sappy answer, but I think the thing I learned is the world is a lot smaller than I thought it was. Mm. Uh, we're able to meet and talk to people all over the world via the internet, and now we have the chance to like fly all around the world and meet people who enjoy our work. And when I was young, I grew up in a small town, and I thought the world was this big place, and I couldn't wait to go out and see it all. And you know, thanks to all of this, I actually have a chance to see it, and it's really cool. You've yeah. you got you got on the Gus bus, and you never looked. I got on the Gus bus, and I never looked back. <laughs> Gus's first website. Uh, was for his town, Eagle Pass, Texas. And it, it was not it. about the town. It just happened to mention the town. He mentioned it in passing when we were at work, and so I, sh I scoured the internet until I found it. And it was, uh, it was all about Blue Oyster Cult, Eagle Pass, Texas, and it was called the Gus Bus. <laughs> it had a picture of that blue Volkswagen bus. It's, it's funny you bring that up. Um, the, the person who first introduced me to the internet uh, also showed me how to make websites, and that's when I made that website. Mm -hmm. uh, she emailed me yesterday, because I guess she read an article about RTX that saw my name in it, and it remembered me. Oh, wow. And was like, I was like, holy shit, I can't believe this person remembered me after like 23 years and, uh, and reached out to say hello. You so, gave up the Gus bus for that? I gave up the Gus bus for Rooster Teeth. I, I think I deleted it, and that's when, uh, that might have been around the time I vandalized Bernie.com. <laughs> and uh, the, the, you made Tasmania an angry. Well, I was vandalizing your uh, Flash website, yeah. showmethemonkey.com, and I would update your monkey animation with random stuff on it. And uh, whatever happened to Show Me the Monkey? I let it lapse years ago. <laughs> I was so excited because that's around the time I, I registered that, right around I guess, Jerry Maguire time. And then uh, and there was that movie Monkey Bone. Monkey Bone. Where Brendan Fraser screams into camera, Show Me the Monkey. Gus came into work one day. Because he had this dumb website, Show Me the Monkey. It was just a monkey with a banana doing this in Flash. J not jacking off, but it was just like <laughs> happy, happy to have a banana. And uh, in the trailer for Monkey Bone, like Chris Kattan? I thought it was Brendan Fraser. It was Brendan, Fra Brendan Fraser was in the movie, but I think Chris Kattan was in the movie too. And he says, Show Me the Monkey. And Gus goes, you got to see this. We're going to be famous. <laughs> <laughs> and then we totally different reasons. Okay. Right, where are we over there? Over here? Okay. Um, so back in the olden days when you guys still did um, shorts, Gus was not Che Guevara and Joel was Hitler twice. <laughs> so I guess what I'm asking for Matt, Bernie, and Jeff, if you had to do a short, which historical asshole would you be? Because 
Bernie Yur, Tito, Matt Stalin, and Jeff. Jesus? <laughs> I said I, asshole. I'm not. <laughs> so did I. <laughs> Jeff has a very special relationship with Jesus. I'd be Jeff Ramsey. <laughs> <laughs> Uh, uh, well, who am I, did you say? Tito? Yeah, I think you're Tito. Uh, Jackson? <laughs> Scarlet Wouldn't they? Yeah, I'd be the Green Power Ranger. <laughs> <laughs> All right. All right. Okay. I'd be, yeah, that, I'd be Green Power Ranger. There. Okay. So, obviously, a lot has changed uh, in 14 years, you know, going from a spare bedroom to uh, working on your second feature film now. So, what's the next frontier for Rooster Teeth? Like, what's the next big thing? <laughs> Hiring that guy. <laughs> there, there's the crow in line who's drinking away back there. It's the life. Matt, next big thing? Um, hey, we're, we're making another movie after Laser Team 2. Yeah. We're excited about it. Um, it's going to be a horror comedy. And it's, uh, it's called Blood Fest. It's called, not called Theater Mode. <laughs> and um, I think you guys are really going to love it. We'll have more news about it soon, but we're going to we'll actually start shooting uh, in August. So yeah. it's, it's really for real. Soon. Is that the first time you've announced that, Matt? Or mentioned yeah, it's it? the first time we've mentioned that. Yeah. yeah. So. It is one of the tough parts about the stuff that we get to do every day, all of us up here, is that, you know, we start working with stuff maybe a year now before, or sometimes even longer before the audience gets to hear about it and we get to talk about it publicly. Like, um, if you were at the animation panel, if you were at the Ruby panel, well, I shouldn't spoil it. No, because they're doing a panel tomorrow. I think it's been out there. I think it's, it's been, been out there. Been I, out I read there. it on Reddit. Oh, you read it on Reddit? Okay, yeah. So they announced at the uh, Ruby panel yesterday, and then uh, Gray stopped by uh, the Red versus Blue panel later in the day, uh, that RT Animation is working on a new show. RT Animation is making a mech show called Genlock. Yeah. <laughs> And we've all wanted to talk about this show for, you know, half a year now uh, since we first started discussing. It's still a long way away. It's, uh, Gray's very clear to, to tell you that. It's, uh, it's coming soon, but coming soon doesn't mean within the next year. It takes a, it takes a while to get a new animation project uh, up and running. Our animation department is just absolutely fucking killing it. And uh, they are going to make this a great show for you guys. But it, man, it's fun because it's like, you look at Rooster Teeth now, and it's like these huge major like departments. Like individually, each one of the these are like their own companies in a way. You know, like the mm -hmm. animation department, the featured production department, the Let's Play family, our live event stuff, and they all started from like individual shows that then grew. Like Red vs. Blue started the animation department. You know, the Achievement yeah. Guide started what is now this huge Let's Play family, with its own live events and everything. Uh, you know, just going to cons and, you know, selling DVDs out of a suitcase in a hallway, that turned into all of our live events and everything, and then shorts that we were making turned into these big feature productions. It's kind of, it's crazy how all these things have grown. It's, it is nutty, I agree. <laughs> and we still didn't learn anything. Yeah. yeah. Uh, it's also crazy you can, you can trace those things back to those one moment. Yeah. It's, yep. Yeah, like every time, 100% of the time. Yep. We're All right, calm down, kid. Yeah. <laughs> All right, who's next? Is it over this side now? Yeah. What is the best slash worst uh, video or video series to introduce someone to Rooster Teeth with? Oh, a new fan, you mean? Like a new viewer? Yeah. Oh, I thought you meant introduce somebody to the company. No. Uh, What would you say? What's, is there a video you use? For example, I just, uh, just watched Thanks Killing 3, so needless to say, I am hungover. That's not a good movie. <laughs> not a good episode. <laughs> <laughs> uh, 
Uh, there, uh, there's a live action video that came out of we like Ralph Albanado that was like Jack and Joel fucking crows. I wouldn't recommend that one. What? You don't remember that? I don't remember that one at yeah. all. What are you talking about? I don't know what. Yeah. What are you? What are they like? Doing? Birds? Is it like bird fucking? Oh right. I do. Remember right. That, yeah. I do remember that. Yeah. yeah. Trying to make a little. What? <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> That happened. Trying to make that happened. That wasn't joke. just in my head. That, yeah. yeah. <laughs> that was the follow-up to your awesome Connectimals video, though. So, yeah. which was incredible. Oh. It's bad. Uh, I had equipment. So. I don't know. I, I if I, I don't episode know, like, one of Red versus Blue. Yeah, yeah. You know, or um, I'm trying to think of my favorite Let's Play. Like, you know, maybe the Tower of Pimps episode of you know Minecraft. It's episode two, right? Uh, through two, yeah, two? Two. yeah. I, I think like animated adventures yeah. is a good start. Oh, that's a great oh, yeah. call. Gotta, great call. You got to get their expectations down real low. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I think getting them down real low, I, and then the rest of the videos look great. I think two of my favorite animated adventures are Chris cooking sword, <laughs> and uh, the one where you, Bernie talks about Godzilla being afraid of humans, like humans are afraid of bugs. <laughs> <Yeah>. <laughs> They're freaked out by little humans. But uh, I, I would also say, I mean, when you asked the question, it really popped into mind is uh, Gauntlet Season 2, uh, which, not an enormously popular show, but if you look at it now, too, it's, it's weird because even, like, people we now work with, like Funhouse and the guys from Kind of Funny, they're in that. So it's like a weird, almost like a future prediction of what the company was going to look like five years later. Yeah. Uh, and then it's also got the cool community component of it too, where we just berate them constantly. But uh, so, I mean, so it's fun. You could tell in Gauntlet season two just how fat Greg was gonna get. Yeah. We, no, tell. it's a dumb joke. He's fun. You could you could tell you could tell too. It's like how tired we already were with uh, working with one another. <laughs> um, immersion would be another good one because you can uh, somebody who's not familiar with our culture could really wrap their head around that. Well, it's Gauntlet season two. No, Immersion. Oh, Immersion. Yeah I, don't, yeah, I guess so. I always think of Immersion as being something that could be a better introduction for people to Rooster Teeth. But it's like, I don't know. It's just, I, I, it just never seems to work out that way. Although mm. it is a popular show, it seems to be like, um, you know, it seems to be something that our audience like internally likes. You know gotcha. I, mean? I, always expect, I always expect Immersions to break out more than they do. Maybe because the first one did so much. Stranger. <laughs> All right, Ray. Yeah, yeah. We, we get, we get okay. it. Okay. Yeah. We get it. You can have your Twitch channel back. <laughs> oh, he's fucking rich. Shut up. Okay. Hey. Um, first thing I would like is to say thank you to all of you for creating a show that I would spend hours uh, watching when I should have been studying for Spanish. Let's see. Then I like. How's your Spanish? Yeah. Let's ask the rest of the question in Spanish. <laughs> No, hablo espanol. <laughs> oh, I see you went to the Lopez School of Spanish. <laughs> okay. My, my question is actually, um, I read somewhere like Red vs. Blue was only supposed to last like eight episodes, and I was wondering if you guys still remembered how it was originally supposed to end. Yeah, it was uh, six episodes, and it was going to end with the red guy, uh, the going... red rookie, getting pink armor. That was how it was going to end. Huh. Uh, it was just a little mini series, and that was it. That that pink armor episode with the uh, donut, the lightest red. All of that was the last episode. Huh. And then if people liked it, we were gonna, you know, potentially make more of it. But I mean, episode two, we were like, all right, this is something bigger. So immediately started working on something much more long term. Immediately compromise your artistic integrity for. Uh, yep. For that. <laughs> Cha ching. All right. Thank you. How about over here? So I've been on the site for 12 years. This is my first RTX with my wife. Uh, thank you. Brag about it. Yeah. <laughs> Mr. Got a wife over here. <laughs> and she likes being nerdy like me. Uh, so besides Scarlett Johansson and the name Rooster Teeth, what would you change about the company now or in the past? I would give the company $2 billion. <laughs> I remember when um, Yahoo tried to acquire Facebook for $2 billion, I think back in 04 or 05. Yeah. I drafted a fake press release uh, saying to Yahoo that we would let them buy our website for $2 billion. <laughs> they didn't. 
change? Yeah, I don't know. I mean, it's tough because if you change one thing, you don't know how it could like cascade over the years, you know? I don't know, I, you know, I just go back to the, the quickness thing. Like, Red versus Blue is pretty much our only show for about eight years, you know? Yeah. We did some other things here and there. Um, yeah, but it was like seven or eight years where we were kind of like focused on one main thing. And I think, uh, you know, that's a long time. It doesn't seem like it because we've done so much between that point and now at 15 years. But man, yeah, eight years is a long time. Seven years is a long time to be uh, focusing on just one thing. You know, it's funny you say that. <clears throat> I was having this, I was telling Gus this yesterday. Yesterday morning, I had a realization when I was, uh, they were asking me, Keller was asking me uh, to come in next week to record Griff mm -hmm. stuff for the end of season 15. We, we made, or my participation in Red vs. Blue was seasons one through seven. I've, it's now been made longer, and the show uh, longer without me than with me. Yeah, yeah. Like eight seasons without 15. me participating, well, aside from a voice actor, but as yeah. far as production, that's fucking crazy. It's pretty nuts, yeah. And I think uh, G Gavin is just about at the point where he's been, either as a fan or working, he's been a part of Rushi's longer than he hasn't been in his life. Yeah, over half of his life. Over half of his life. Yeah. He spent, like, oh. involved with Rooster Teeth in some way. What a loser. Yeah. <laughs> Sucker. There's, there's, like, it kind of calls back to that earlier question, uh, but there, there are, all, are little things, obviously. I think we should have adopted YouTube sooner, hindsight, right? But there's, I don't know, nothing formative that I can yeah. think of. Yeah, it's kind of sooner stuff, but we can't really argue with anything, because there's, you know, there's been a, there was, there have been a lot of people along the way um, where we were competitive with them, although you, I don't think in this industry you really have competitors. I told the Homestar Runner guys when we first met them years ago, uh, I said, you know, I feel like you guys are competitors, but it's kind of like, in those days, it was kind of like showing up to the starting line for the Boston Marathon, and there's four other people at the starting line with you. It's like, yeah, I guess we're racing against each other, but, you know, not really. We're kind of racing against ourselves at this point. And, uh, you know, there's always been people, like, all along the way who were more popular than what we're doing. Even with Red vs. Blue, as a machinima series, I mean, if you look at, like, lists and magazines of, like, most popular machinima in the art form, uh, Leroy Jenkins was always something that people mentioned <laughs> more than Red vs. Blue. So there was always things all along the way that were more popular. It's just that over those, whatever those things were, always changed. And we just kind of kept going along with our thing. So, yeah, it's, uh, I wouldn't, I don't know if I'd change anything because I don't think, you know... I like where we are. I like where we got. I like being in this room with all you guys. So let's not change that. Thanks for taking my question. And congrats on the wife, bragger. <laughs> <laughs> Over here. Hello. Hi. How's it going? Pretty, pretty good. How are you doing, dude? <laughs> uh, good. Uh, sorry, I just wanted to. I am the voice of God. <laughs> okay. Cool. Does God have a question? <laughs> Sorry. He's uh, pissed about what you said about his son, Jeff. <clears throat> mm. eh. Sorry. Um, my question is, um, I'm a film student back in L.A. Uh, I'm also a writer, director, editor. Uh, do you guys have any future advice for someone like me? I would focus on one of those things. Yeah. I mean, it, it, they'll all, you know, is your, especially if you're a student, Yep. As you're doing all of those things, they'll all inform the other parts of your career. Like when you direct, uh, it, you learn how to direct by editing. Editing tells you what you need to shoot. Uh, and then as your director tells you what you need to write. Uh, and then when you write, you see how the directors and editors fuck it up. Um, so I would say use this time to figure out what your actual passion is and then focus on that one thing. Yeah, I mean, they, and they say there's like the thing that you write, you know, there's the thing that you shoot, and then there's the thing that you edit. And there's sort of three different things. And we like to, f we, I think we all feel that we know how to fuck all three of those up. <laughs> <laughs> we do it well. All right. Thank you. Um, can you guys also sign my badge? Yeah, why don't you catch us, can you catch us after this? Yeah, after sure. The, yeah, for the signing thing? All right. All right cool. Thanks. Go. We're running out of time. Hi. So having started out with a machinima, did you guys ever foresee animation becoming such a large part of Rooster Teeth? And if so, when? Matt, I think that's totally one for you because yeah, Matt's I mean, got the background in animation. He, I think so, but when well, I, well, I was working in animation in, in Hollywood when we started uh, Rooster Teeth, and to me, doing Machinima was so refreshing because uh, the normal production cycle for an, like an animated movie is like two years, you know. So the fact that we could put out stuff every week uh, with a very small crew 
was really awesome and really exciting. So we always wanted to stretch our wings and kind of like get into doing more complex animation. But in the early days, it was just so exciting just to be able to produce so much so fast and kind of like share the vision and the voice with everybody um, that we really didn't think about it. And I think after a while, uh, Bernie would say, you know, he was writing with, with seven verbs with red versus blue. Yeah. It was like run, crouch, shoot, jump, head bob. I don't know. Is that a, is that a, a verb? So, uh, so yeah, after, after a while, we did want to expand and do more things. And I think it just it was more of a natural evolution at that point. Awesome. Yeah. There were two moments when I knew that Matt was going to be our CEO long term at the company. And one was when we were starting in red versus blue with animation. It was a huge undertaking. And Matt was like, had experience doing it. It's like, we got this. Here's what we're planning for going forward. And then starting into Ruby and those things. And like being able to handle that and seeing the future of the company and what he was able to do. And the other time was in 2006 when Matt found out that somebody at Comic-Con was selling bootleg oh. RVB DVDs. <laughs> and Matt went to their booth, took all the RVB bootleg DVDs off of it, cursed at the guy, and then flipped his fucking table over. <laughs> yes! Yes! <laughs> I learned never to cross Matt Hollum that day. <laughs> the worst part was those bootleg DVDs had no fanfare whatsoever. <laughs> <laughs> the table flip was badass, though. Yeah. And Gavin was there as like he was 16. He was like, I can film that in slow mo. That'd be a great show. <laughs> I, I think this is this is probably our last question here. No pressure, all the pressure, so much pressure. Awesome. Uh, hold on. No, no, no. Uh, no, 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 no. We're gonna end this if you don't fucking ask your question. <laughs> so, real question. Uh, you guys always bring something new to the table without making any of your jokes old or anything else, including action and the anime, how do you like go ahead and cascade it up to like the next new thing for you? We don't make jokes. Yeah. This is all serious just, topics. Yeah. We just hired people who are better at it than us. Yeah, I yeah. mean, that's really honestly the answer is like a big part of our job now is discovering new talent and Getting to work with those people kind of refreshes our voice, but then we get totally new voices as well. Like, we all like working with new people just because it's like we get to try new things ourselves and then, you know, help them make and develop new shows is, you know, ultimately the future of this company. I mean, we, the five of us up here wouldn't be able to make everything that you see at Brewster Teeth today. It'd be it, literally impossible. There'd be no way. Yeah. I mean, the five of us made one show for six, seven years, you know, before we started to branch off into other stuff. So. It's, it's yeah. an absolutely great point. I came up with an idea for a new show for Let's Play that I'm in the process of pre-producing right now purely because I watched a Steven Subtick video. And it, I was 100% inspired by that video to make something new. And that's... That's the best part of this job and getting to work with younger, creative, talented people, right? Yeah, yeah. yeah. And not just in Rooster but like in the you know, online video creator you know, industry as a whole. I mean, there's always stuff you can look at to be inspired by. All right, thanks for coming out, everybody. See you Bye. next year. Bye.